previously on Captain Wilfram's casual way to Z of fence and uh, reached Q and was trying to decide what should Q stand for? Would it be something that is a queer fence? And would it just be quillions? What? And in the end I decided that was actually a question and Q should stand for questions. And that uh, if people left questions in the comments under where, where I posted that video, then in a week or so, which it's been, uh, I would make a second video and answer some of those questions. And unfortunately nobody posted any questions. People did make suggestions as to what Q should stand for, so I guess I'll get into those. Um, there still isn't, as far as I know, anything really particularly um, <laughs> queer-oriented in fencing, uh, except uh, the Japanese term Yutsukai, uh, which is Japanese for uh, two-sword wielder and has subsequently become um, a uh, uh, colloquialism for bisexual, and it's also a colloquialism for somebody who likes sweet and so country and western, you know, both kinds of whatever. But let's have a look at what people actually said or suggested Q should stand for. Um, at least one person suggested quarter staff, uh, which would be nice, it'd probably be more related to uh, armoured combat. SCA, but sadly we don't do quarter stuff for various reasons, so mm, it would be nice. We can get a little bit of Robin Hood stuff, but no, sorry. Uh, there's there's not really quarter stuff in um, SCA fencing and in radio fencing or anything. Um, somebody else suggested uh, Caterbra. Uh, unfortunately, that's not really fencing either. That's a battle that took place uh, two days before Waterloo in 1815, and is therefore a SCA period anyway. But um, if if uh, you were going to use that as a jump off for a fencing thing, it, w it would be military saber and Highland broadsword and stuff like that. But we're not because we don't have those in the SCA. Uh, and it's out of period. So there. <laughs> um, we also had quest, one's, one's path, uh, or, or whatever. Um, yeah, I imagine people do have paths in the SCA, or some people I know have paths in the SCA. I, at the moment, don't. Um, but I guess, uh, I guess, uh, calling your, your path, your, your quest, uh, is probably a good idea. I'll resist the urge to sing that whole, you know, this is my quest to follow that star, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far. Um, he's in period, by the way, Don Quixote, of course. Uh, the musical is not. <laughs> So getting on to the, the more serious bits. First off, Quillians, Quillans, Keons, however you want to pronounce them. Right. These bits. I did suggest that Q might stand for that last week. And first off, Speaking of, of your SCA path and your SCA quest, if you're in the SCA, your persona can't really call them either Quillians, Keons, or Quillans, uh, because that term was invented um, in uh, 1884 in the Book of the Sword uh, by uh, R.F. Horton. And he took them from a, a then uh, current French phrase, uh, Key. Q U I W -E, L E, uh, which actually uh, now means um, bowling pins, but previously meant legs, uh, or used as a sort of colloquialism for legs because these things stick out like that. But again, not period, this is 19th century. Uh, and that word in turn derived in terms of bowling pins from, from an old German word, kegel. Uh, no relation to kegel exercises because this kegel uh, meant um, a stake, uh, you know, like you'd hammer through Dracula. 
because uh, again, it may be something that looks like that. So, the actual word, and I'll get to the pronunciation in a minute, is out of period. It's the 18th century, you can always trust the Victorian state to mess things up. Um, we think in period, of course, people just refer to this as, as the guard or the cross guard, that kind of thing. <clears throat> Sometimes just the cross, they call it. Uh, and so 1884, R.F. Barton comes up and he, and he says, okay, he refers in the Book of the Sword to uh, the Quillens, Q U I double L O N S. There's no second I, so it's not Quillians. Uh, although, obviously, some sort of fiction writers and, and fantasy writers and stuff like that call them Quillians, Mercedes like it, call them Quillians. Um, Fritz Leiber on here has called them equivalents, uh, which is at least the correct spelling. How do we pronounce it? Mm, it's, it's, it <laughs> that's difficult to tell because obviously uh, uh, Burton wrote it as a as an anglicised word, and so you think yeah it should be equivalents, but he wrote it intending that it was a French word. So then Q-U-I is pronounced key, so then it, it should really be pronounced key on. With that sort of nasal end, you know, that's a key on, not key on. Um, so I guess it's up to individuals how they prefer, whether they prefer to uh, pronounce it as the French, uh, the French spelling would imply, or as uh, Burton's nationality is English, would imply. Either way it works. So there you go. As for what you do with them, of course, well, protects this bit. It didn't take very long, as you can imagine, when people invented the sword, for people to figure out that another blade coming down here <laughs> would do nasty things to the base of the thumb. And even if I put my gauntlets on, you'll find that in order to give the thumb movement, there's, there's a gap here that could allow a blade to chop in like that. And so, of course, they invented a thing that would prevent that. Um, then, as time goes on and people develop actual fencing skills, you get this uh, then development that, well, we can actually use these not just to protect knuckle and thumb joint, but we can use them to catch blades and deflect the blade. You know, if there's a blade coming in here, you can help deflect away and help in the power. Um, if you get the right angle, if there's there's a blade coming sort of this way and you've got the right angle, in theory you might be able to snap it. Um, you can certainly, if you're half sword, and use it to scoop a blade out of the way. And of course, in in uh, Kunstdesfechten, you have hold it by the blade and whack people with the quillings or key on. And um, depending on the exact shape of these, especially if they if they come to like a, a diamond shaped punch, or if they're uh, you know not rolled over like this, probably even if they are rolled over, but especially if they're not, uh, that will go through a, a plate steel helmet. And so this is uh, this is a somewhat brutal and nasty way of of offing your opponent, and so brutal and nasty that even back in the day. Uh, they, they, uh, call that the murder stroke, you know, mod schlag, because it's like, it wasn't just killing, it was murder because it was so brutal. Uh, amazingly, in all the episodes of Tiger where somebody comes in and says, there's been a murder, uh, nobody ever had been done in with a mod schlag, which is really disappointing. They should bring that back just so that we can have that done. Because <laughs> that would be fun. The other actual fencing subject that Q can stand for is cut. Uh, or, I should pause a moment and go and get a dagger because I'm sat here in the spare bedroom. Because it is very likely that the subject of, of the video for R will be rain stop play. Um, so I'm going <laughs> well, to wait a moment to grab a dagger so I can talk about cut. And as if by magic, where did this come from? Right, suddenly everything was just like 
Ooh, a tiger. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, cart, of course. Uh, it's fourth cart. So you, know, you have your first, second, third, fourth. And for most systems, uh, fourth guard means your hand is this way up. I think I really knew about this before. Please, for guards. <coughs> so, this is card. And obviously I'm sat on a bed, so I'm you know, you know, doing a stance for it. But wherever you are, and however far across, palm up, card. Simple. Except. If... You're a fan of Cap Feral. Or if you're coming in from modern sort of sport fencing. In modern sport fencing, there are nine cards. Um, and in modern sport fencing, this is, this is card. This is fourth. But if it's further over, that's fifth. That's quinta. Hey, that starts with Q as well. Cool. Bonus. We've got a two for one here. So, this would be Quinta, and that would be Kark, if we're modern sport fencers. Except I'd be, obviously, standing, and, and in a proper stance, and more side on, but look, where my hand is. The other exception is if we're fans of Capo Ferro. Um, hey, Capo Ferro is a rather, a rather funny chap. He doesn't actually really count first and second as true guards. He thinks really only the, the third guard is actually a real guard. And his his cart and quinta are a bit hard, even in the uh, the manual, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, to really see in the artwork what the hand position is. So here we go. This guy is in Capofero's cart, and I, I don't know about you, but I, does does that look? Like his palms turned up to you. Palms turned up to you. Maybe slightly, because I think this is the index finger that he's gone in. So, maybe. But what? Oh, yeah, but there was other things. I mean, this guy's in, this guy's in first. It's not far off that, uh, Agrippa, uh, style of first, except that Obviously, the footwork's completely different than uh, the new group. Here we have uh, we have a seconda again, completely different footwork. This is the guy we're interested in. though. this is uh, Capoferro's Quinta, so that's the other cue. And again, it's really it doesn't look like. This hand is turned upwards. Uh, it's very hard to tell. <clears throat> and the blade is very horizontal. It's quite withdrawn as well. So it's a very different stance, uh, uh, a very different um, guard rather than the usual cart or quarter that, that you see in, in most other systems. Uh, And, I, and I've got this wrong. Is that F? Shit. Okay, we'll edit this. <laughs> okay, here we have uh, Capo Ferro's, what he's calling a third guard. It's a, it's, um, a little bit more outstretched than most people, uh, most uh, other systems do. Um, again, this, this sort of type and all bike stands. And here we are interested in this guy. So this is figure E. So he's number five. So this is the other guard, the the other Q guard, uh, Quinta. And this again, <laughs> the, the the hand is is behind his dagger hand. Unfortunately, so it's hard to tell whether it's palm up or not. Uh, unfortunately, um, it is very noticeably sort of drooping. Uh, <laughs> if you, if you want to call it that, um, it looks also as if he's turned, but it looks as if he's brought his hand slightly further over. So, in terms of 
very cool position in uh it looks like it's probably a bit more central than than in uh figure d where I'll go back to that page uh where he's clearly outstretched from from his his, his right hand side uh and this is a much more withdrawn guard. But we can't really tell whether it's a true uh, traditional fourth guard because we can't see his hand. So, there you go. So that that's uh, character quarter. Uh, a little bit extra on that compared to um, what I did in the uh, G is for guards video. So in other words, it looks to me like in that cap of ferro, that his his quarter is kind of here, and maybe his hand slightly to it. It doesn't look quite palm up to me. Maybe it's kind of like half and half like this. And his uh, quinta, I think, looks it's much more withdrawn. It looks as if it's sort of about here rather than here. Uh, with the, the dagger hand here, but unfortunately the dagger hand is, as you saw, hiding the sword hand, so can't tell whether whether he's got like a the sort of vertical grip, you know, a, a, a sort of third grip, which he probably has because uh, he really loves the the tears grip. Um, he thinks it's the, the, really the only true guard, you know, read uh, Cup of Ferals, but so it's probably a terror's guard. Uh, it could be like this, but you can't tell. So, and that brings us to the, the final suggestion of what the Jew should stand for, and that is. Errol Paul, Paul de Gorey, suggested Q should be for quart. Quart pot, put your porter in. And that sounds like the winner to me. Because, I don't know about you, but this, 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 um, pandemic era and stuff, well, we all need a good stiff drink, don't I? So, Q, I've decided, is for quart of porter. This is empty, it's just the job. <laughs> so there you go. Q is for quart. Q is for a, a quantity of things. And next up, hopefully R can be for something other than rain stopped play. Ah, the forecast is for it to be a little better tomorrow. So. <laughs> 